I'm Randy. And I'm Sean. And this is episode number seven. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, today. welcome to the Daily Mail. Oh, and to the Daily Mail, yes. Right. We're working barbershop and yep. Nadine's working away like crazy. Yep, exactly. So, what are we talking about today? Today, we have a new scotch to uh, put on our, our bar list, actually. Um, this came highly recommended from, um, from our supplier. Uh, it is an interesting scotch. This is the Glen Goyne number eight. So number eight uh, indicates the, the, the eighth generation of this particular scotch. So every year they produce a new iteration of this. This happens to be number eight. Yeah, so yeah, and like you said, it's just an annual release. It's an annual That's release. It. Um, it's now. I will say that there are a number of casks involved in this particular right. um, in this particular one. So there's, uh, and I, I can't remember the percentages, but there's definitely the oak. Um, there is uh, a quarter of the time, or some some percentage of the time, is spent in sherry cask, um, as well as another one which I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't recall either which one it is, but. Yeah, so it's like 59%. It is cask strength it right is cast out strength. of the cask. So um, I believe in some of their uh, online information, they say that this is as close to, to getting it right out of the cask yourself as, as you're ever you going to get. possibly get. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I read that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let us have a look at this gem. Oh, it's unchill filtered. A and natural this is, color. And this is Glenn Goyne's actual claim to fame, is that they do not chill filter their, their scotch at all. Um, Glenn Goyne, by the way, is uh, the name given to the place um, because of its reputation for migrating geese to gather there. Right. Okay? <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so they're probably not Canadian geese because those guys don't leave. No, I don't think they fly that far. I don't think they go <laughs> anywhere near Scotland. Yeah. Hello, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They certainly don't go south, that, that's for sure. Anyway, not here anyway. But, yeah, I mean, you so can, you can definitely uh, tell the sherry is, uh, is yes. quite prominent on it. Absolutely. Sherry is all there. Now, you don't smell it, but I capture this lovely overripe banana that is just, oh. it just, to me, just leaps right out. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not getting that, but. But definitely there's other notes of apricot and other orchard fruits in here. Yes. And a certain amount of spice in there too. And it, and, it, and it's, I find it neat that certain, certain scotches actually do leave you with that, that little bit of spice in the nose. I'm, I'm definitely expecting it on the, on the palate, but I'm not really, I, I, I like it on the nose. Yes. I, I like it, I think it adds another dimension. Yeah, no, there's a lovely spices. quality to this in the nose. It's really, really good. Um, lots of things that I've read about this have said that the, the nose is really, really um, quite, quite profound in comparison to the, to the actual tasting of it. Well, let's mm. see. Well, uh, proof will be in the pudding. Yeah. Well, Legs nice, but not, a lot and it's a beautiful color it is a lovely color yeah but yeah and I think that's largely due to the port cask or the sherry cask that, yeah. that it's uh, yeah yeah all right well, well, dive in have a bottoms up everybody if you're following along at home this is where we drink Very peppery. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, white pepper all over the no, place. No, oh my no, goodness. That 59% really has got some kick to it. Ah, uh, so. yeah, that's true. Yeah. And a long finish. Look at the finish of oh, this. Yes, oh, yeah. It's just, oh, I'm getting cinnamon. Now on it's the coming. Finish. Yeah, now yeah, the so cinnamon I'm, comes. Right kind of on the tip of the tongue, that cinnamon is coming through. Tip of the tongue, sides of the tongue. Yeah. What else is in there? But a very long finish. But yeah. Very much so. This is like that that long drive off of the eighth hole, and it's yes. just like, see ya. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And it's still there. Very complex. 
Incidentally, everybody, I just want to say that uh, I want to introduce Wayne Corner is playing today, uh, playing some blues behind us. Uh, it's a little background music at the shop yeah, today. Yeah, allow me music. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually a new feature, uh, actually a regular feature of the Daily Mail. Uh, a little bit of live music here and there. Wayne, no. by the way, is playing a 1931 resonating guitar. This is one of the early <laughs> blues guitars out there, so... So this is, um, what other information do we have on here? I mean, it's on chill filters, natural color. It is, we don't, there's no age statement, so we don't know. We don't know how, how long, long it's it is. been. Yeah. Um, but we know that, that, that they're, certainly their they're, um, average is around well, it's 8 between, to 12, right? Well, I think the, um, their regular um, selections are 10 to 25 to years spread. Oh. Right, so, and it's one third sherry cask, two thirds refill ah, there cask, we are. and a smattering of bourbon right. barrels. Right. Yes. Yeah, and they say it's um, big and bold with a glorious thick mouthfeel, and deliciously lingering oak infused. I would like say it lingers lingering. For sure. Like yes. holy cow, this has got some serious hang time. Definitely. I mean, it's non-peated. I can taste the malt in it. Oh yeah. Can you get like biscuit in it at all? So yeah, and that that was one of the interesting things. So biscuit, um, digestive biscuit yes. was one of the one of the flavor profiles that they had mentioned earlier. I'm not sure I'm finding that. But what I did notice, um, and again, I could be completely off base here, but for me, that the end notes of this kind of leave you with this sort of leathery sort of sensation in my mind hmm. I don't know Tarl what did you think did you catch that leathery kind of finish not really definitely get the bananas, definitely gets the bananas. bananas. Cinnamon, a lot of yeah, cinnamon. cinnamon yeah we'd agree with that for yeah. sure and your, like, the, the legs on it. Yeah. fantastic yeah yeah it's very good so let's try a little bit of water yeah. see what happens now something I read said that adding water to this actually spoils it. That's not our <clears throat> typical experience with... You want a full one mil? Yes, let's do a full Kay. one mil in there. Thank you. Yes. You have to be very scientific about this. You're very scientific. Yeah. One, complete one, complete one milliliter. There yeah. we are. Boom. Yeah. Now we'll give it a little, uh, little swirl. Right away, does it change it? right away, you notice the change in the nose, right instantly. It's far muted, the bananas are gone, the spice is richer. Yeah, I'm smelling something else in there. Yeah, I am too, as well. Is that like? Something earthier? Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Certainly the, um, the, the, I, I kind of, I get a sense that there's more of that orchard fruit, but, but more musky uh, than, than. Yes, that musky, definitely. Uh-huh. Is starting to come through. Yeah. And I haven't. I haven't read or heard anybody talk about that muskiness. No, neither have I, but, but it's definitely there. And oh, certainly, yeah. it's very certainly, prominent now. Absolutely. And on the palate, is it? I have yet to go it's there. It's just, no. Um, am I getting that same cinnamon? I mean, the finish is still long. I still get that real, that real peppery kind of flavor on the, um, but on way the more yeah. mellow. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of get where people go with this when they say adding water kind of changes it to not at. It certainly lacks the brightness, the crispness, the fullness mm. 
I expect usually when I add a little bit of water to a scotch, I'm expecting it to open. I'm expecting to get a lot more of the floral, the bouquet, the whole, I want to, I want to experience a deeper version of the cask and I'm finding well, that I'm not getting that. You know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try adding another Ooh. milliliter to this and see oh, what it thing. does. I know. I see it. <laughs> and I know there's, shout out to some of our fans in, in Winnipeg and, <laughs> and they're, they, they don't like the water thing. Don't put water in scotch. No. What? Okay, so we just, no, no, no. We just did something very anti-Scottish. Yeah, sometimes. Apparently. Sometimes. Yeah. A little the water. The Camper Town crowd doesn't like the... Yeah. Fair. Yeah. A little bit of water breaks the surface tension. And this is one of the things that makes it so interesting when you add water to allow all of those flavors, all of those scents to come out. Mm. Um, and to, to really, it should open the whole scotch. I find that it doesn't do that with this. No. Adding the second milliliter did nothing. Did it nothing. Just, it just, it just watered it, it just down. watered it down. That's right. So. Okay. So. The nose isn't as prevalent. And on the palate. I find it nothing. I find it to be a little bit underwhelming yes it is underwhelming especially with a total uh, of two uh, milliliters uh, yeah i still get the very on the finish the finish is still long i still get that very heavy peppery fair flavor right but, but it's um i'm not getting the bananas and i'm not getting the, the cinnamon on it it's just it has just watered it down so i think you're right i think on this one i think to water. our palates doesn't do not using water on it would be uh yeah would be better no yeah. h2o yeah um, eric and donna no h2o on this stuff price yeah. um <laughs> so let's talk about the price of this puppy so this yeah. was not a terribly inexpensive stuff this would um this was a three figure on the shelf scotch. Right. Yeah. so and low by all standards but yeah. i mean so just a little bit over 100 bucks a little bit over 100 bucks yeah yeah um i don't know guys well, i know. would almost say save your money a little bit you know yeah. i yeah. mean it's it's interesting I, I will say the brown bag scotch from the last episode this <laughs> the, the co-op 12 <laughs> blows this out of the water in yeah. my opinion in my opinion yeah so yes for a, for a cask strength i think i would expect more and that's where you it's know? only it's just, that's the only thing it really to me, that's the only thing it has going for it. Yeah. Um, is that it's got that huge punch to it, yeah. which is great. Um, so if you're looking to go from zero to a hundred in 3.5 seconds, this yeah. is the well, scotch yeah. to drink. Yeah. But if you're looking for that nuance, the character in the scotch, absolutely, it's that not follows there. through. No. It's not really there. So this is the difference between a century home and a custom built. Yeah. So our scoring. Mm. You know, our scoring scheme kind of 80 to 90. It's got to be exceptional to be at 90. Absolutely. And it's got to be, um, it's well, not be. really very good to dip below 80, right? And I'm so tempted to do that. I really, <laughs> I really, I kind of want to see this somewhere around the low 70s. Like, but, but out of fairness, because it had something going for it when it wasn't, when there was no water yeah. added. Yeah. Um, it did have something going for it. So, so some redeeming points here. Yeah. I'm going to post this at about 81 and a half. Yeah. And I think that's fairly generous. I think it would be. Yeah. I think that's fairly generous, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but disappointing with the water. Wow. That was really mm. unusually bad. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. It was, uh, it's not bad. I, I mean, it's, <laughs> to say it's bad is pure alcohol abuse. Actually, it's it's not it's not bad, but it's not as what I expected. No, no, adding the water didn't do anything for it. No. It didn't enhance the experience at all. And and what we're as Scotch drinkers, what we are we are trying to do is is get that that experience Absolutely. from the from the from the beverage from the spirit. We're not interested in in uh, like a twenty year old doing shots on this and getting hammered. We're interested in, in, in the flavors, Absolutely. the aromas. We're trying to experience. We're trying to be a little more responsible we as we get see, to the age, right? We want to really see yeah. what 
what really good scotch looks like at a really affordable price. Yes. And, and so for a cask strength, um, is this kind of in the ballpark or is it on the low end of, of the price range for most cask strengths? I don't know. Well, it's, yes, it is a little on the low end for a cask strength. I will say that. No. Um, a lot of the art bags that we see that come across that are that are community releases and their cask strength, um, upwards of three, sometimes yeah. three yeah. plus, three hundred dollars plus. So, is this decent yeah. value at a cask strength? Yeah, for around a hundred bucks. Yeah. That's where it gets the extra point five on the eighty one. In my there you go. So we'll round it up. 82. Oh no, we're gonna 82. Okay, so boy, we just keep pushing her up. 82 bucks what? or 82 points on a on a hundred and some odd dollar scotch. Yeah, yeah. I would feel like I want a little more value out of that. Yeah, I feel of uh, I, I, just a regular single malt that comes in at 46, 43, 46 percent. I've had a better experience with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I agree. Would I would I rush out and buy that? I don't think so. No, and I no. would hope that everybody takes this to heat. Yeah. While it's attractive packaging, lovely bottle, and the cask strength is certainly an attraction. No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I really, unless you've got a lot of other backups, I wouldn't make this my go-to for sure. No, no, but, I mean, it's not bad. It's, but it's not, if you're, if you're looking to maximize your dollar, spending on scotch, mm. it gets, it gets more and more expensive every year, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I just think I would I would bypass this one, unfortunately, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And final thoughts. Yeah. There you have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Glen Goyne, I wouldn't say you knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Batch number eight wasn't stellar. So. All right, we're gonna go to break. And we'll be back shortly uh, after a message from our sponsor, The Daily Mail. Right. We'd like to thank our sponsor, The Daily Mail in High River. If you're in the Calgary area and you need your lid trimmed, some beard love, or you just want to relax and enjoy a beer or sample a great selection of whiskeys, The Daily Mail has you covered. Drop in and support our sponsor, The Daily Mail, High River. All right, we're back. And our next selection is going to be Sean. This is Elijah Craig, small batch. So this is a quite interesting. This one, um, so uh, this is Elijah Craig, just so you a little, a little background on this distillery. Um, Elijah Craig is the first to use a charred oak barrel. Interesting. Yeah. Because that's a standard. That for is bourbon. a standard. Now Absolutely. it is. Yeah. Now yeah. it is. Um, used to be that they would not char the um, American white oak barrel. Now, Elijah Craig came out with that. Oh. So this is a, uh, a small batch, and they say um, distilled for brightness and balance. I've heard good things about Elijah Craig. I have like, too, yeah. actually. Um, a lot of the reviews that I've read on this one um, say that this is the must-have bourbon for your collection this year. It's the father of bourbons. It is. It the says father. right on there. Right, guys. So look, that's got to be true. It says it on the label. It must be true. <laughs> yeah. So it comes in at like forty-seven percent. Yeah. And so. So here's kind an interesting. Kind of a kick-ass bourbon. Yeah. But an interesting point. It says first. Oh, first to char oak barrels. Yeah. Not okay. All right. I was thinking it was in first char Charred oak, oak barrels. barrels. I mean, it has to be an oak. Charred oak barrels, right? I mean, as, so. a, as an absolute component of bourbon, yeah. it must be in an American oak, a white American white oak barrel, and it must be at least fifty percent corn mash. Yeah. I think we've covered this in the past, but yeah, we're gonna we keep, have. But we're going to keep going over that because it's yeah. a very important distinction. It's actually important to understand that. I think I said comes in at forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. Forty-seven percent. So yeah. It's no slouch on the ABV side. It is not a slouch. Which, um, on all whiskeys, I've found that if you're buying the the regular consumer kind of whiskeys at forty percent, it is kind of anemic, right? It just doesn't yeah. hold the flavors very well. If you get forty three and north of that, then it you tends have to be a little bit more. Yeah, it's you got have a little bit more horsepower to get there. Yeah. 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 
I agree. And I yeah. absolutely agree. Because we find that bourbon is not terribly complex anyway, and no. usually about one dimensional. Yeah. Um, but it's still a lovely, lovely, lovely drink. Oh, And it I is. think we need to understand that part too. Yeah. So Elijah, let's see what we've got going on here. So, what about the legs? How are we looking at that? Ah, uh, slow to come, but here they are. Yeah. No, it's got legs on uh, it. Definitely does. Yeah, very nice. Excellent. All right. Well, I mean, I smell on on the nose. There's a, there's a standard um, vanilla, mm. <laughs> um, brown sugar. Oh, there's a there's a dark side to this. I can smell it. What's that? There's. Oh, oh you definitely you got the you definitely oh, have the oak. Is there's all something there, else that's a little sweeter on. Yeah, the, uh, but there's also something a little gray, a yeah. little dark, a little bit, a little bit like um, kind of reminds me of Pennywise the clown under the sewer grates. It's like <laughs> we all float down here. <laughs> No, okay, no, so this, and you know this what? isn't the same as some of the other bourbons. Oh, God, no. no. No, no, This one, and this, and this is one of the things that I love about bourbon, and especially one like this that's so steeped in tradition. There's lots of, of you know, from from more, more, I don't know, let's say less less traditional um, brands out there. Um, 1792 is one that I can think of right away that doesn't have this, but this is a classic bourbon and i gotta say that one of the things i love about this like all classic bourbons this one has that old library smell ah old library it smell. smells like old books and steeped in history and culture this this takes me back to if if i could if i could transport myself back to the civil oh. war this is where i think this would lead me it is definitely more complex mm. on the nose than totally. any any bourbon we've tried. Certainly, so I think I have to. Away. I think I have to apologize to some of our bourbon fans out there. I've always kind of said that bourbon, bourbon is, is one dimensional. Very, very, and it, it's I kind, just, yeah, yeah. We just this said one, that. Elijah Craig. Hello. This is not not one dimensional. Certainly on the nose. My goodness. Yes. Well, it's time to uh, taste it. You know, it's just, I love that. I love that old musty smell that uh, smells like old books. It smells like old barnwood. It's got mm. that, that, that very rural kind of, you know, I think, I actually think I hear, I, well, I want to hear banjos, but what I'm hearing is blues guitar it's, it's, from Wayne Corner. Yeah, from back Wayne there. in the back playing. <laughs> yeah. But. And that's a beautiful sound. Oh my God. Though, I mean, that just, that sets the tone for this bourbon. Oh, it yeah. so totally does. Wayne, oh, right now, by the way, I just New want Orleans? to bring. Yeah, well, oh, no, this no. is this takes me to, this takes me to old Kentucky. Old this Kentucky? takes me back to a place where, um, the Spanish moss hangs from the trees, the, the crisp mountain air. But that, but that lovely, yes. lovely old oak smell. Wow. Hmm. My God, that is yummy. Also a little bit of fruit in there too. I, I I gotta I can't I can't ignore that either. There's a lot of there's a lot of little sweet notes in there as well. Oh, there are for sure. Age on this? There um, is actually no age statement. There is no on. age statement. No, I think you said you read somewhere eight years. And uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah but I read a lot this. about bourbon, so yeah, I'm not sure. it's not on the bottle. If but it's not on the bottle, it's not there. Yeah, it's not there. So. Um, so okay. we don't. So all we, we know is it has to be three years plus a day, mm. right? So. Price point on this? What are we looking at for? Uh, I this? believe this was around. It's sub one hundred for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Eighty bucks or so, or. No? In the ninety, uh, eighty-five uh, range. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So. So actually, for some of the bourbons that we've been trying, most of them have been 40, 50 bucks kind 50 of thing. Yeah, this right? one's a yeah. little this bit one's a little, on more, a little, yeah. little pricier. Well, you know what? For that, it's much better. I would agree. So we've stepped up to in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is a very nice bourbon. I really do enjoy this. I don't get that. There's some of the bourbons that I've had and that we've had, we haven't talked about here. Bullet? 
Is that one? Well, well it is. Well, right. yeah. no. I, don't I don't think we've talked about that. We but that to my palate that. is just overly sweet. Yes, I agree. I was going to say sickeningly sweet, but I didn't want to dis nah, the distiller. Nice. No, so. But, but this, this, there's not a lot of sweetness for this. This one, even though the nose gives you that sense that there might be a little bit of hidden sweetness. It is not. It is not. It is not. This is not your your normal $40, $50 bourbon no. that's sweet. There's, it's relying on that sweetness. No. No. This is this has definitely got a nice a nice vanilla crescendo. I, I really yeah. quite like that. I, I as as I'm as I'm letting the the, the, the flavor mature on the my palate, yeah. I'm starting to notice that the, the vanilla is really starting to kind of creep out mm. of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, nope, for sure. And it is. And vanilla is not one of my favorite flavors. So so when I when I'm experiencing it, and maybe that's the darkness that I'm kind of thinking is in here. But it is. It could also be the 47%. Right? Yeah, 47%. <laughs> and the, what was it, 59.2 of the previous on the one? the previous so, one, yeah. yeah. So our judgment may be becoming slightly impaired. But well, let, let's not use that <laughs> word. That word, yeah. We're not driving, so don't worry. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> My designated driver is our director. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's cutting hair. Yeah. But it's, um, this is head and shoulders above any bourbon I've tasted. Oh, absolutely. Like so when they say, and you know, I gotta say, Randy, when I first tried this, I, I was, I was, I was going to come out and say that this is a, this is one that I'm going to diss and it's, and it's, um, and it's, be, and, and I thought, you know what, this whole show is going to be completely negative, but no. I've actually found some new love for this. Yes, no. I, I actually me like, too. I I like have, this um, a lot, actually. Now there's another one that I that I like that is not really sweet. And um, forgive me if I get it backwards. It's either Basil Hayden or Hazel Baden. Basil Hayden. Basil Hayden. Yeah. And I do like that because it is not Sweet, it's not overly right? sweet. I just I don't like that overly sweet bourbon right? and, I, and, I, and I honestly, the first time I tried this, I thought to myself, hmm. Now, mind you, neck pour, fresh fresh pour, just open the bottle, no yeah. time to breathe, nothing yeah. like that. So, and at first I thought, man, this is glorified four roses. This is like, ugh, you know. Well, it's bourbon. It's not. But bourbon has bourbon. bourbon is usually has that um, vanilla uh, flavor to true, it, right? True. This is I find this one to be very quite pronounced, but but pleasantly so. Yes, pleasantly, pleasantly so. Mm. And it's just yeah. And for me, that lack of sweetness really enhances the whole experience. No, most definitely. And the, and the nose, because of that lack of sweetness. The the other characteristics come through on it. Totally. If there is so a like in way my mind, to drive complexity in bourbon, I think these guys have nailed it. Yeah. No, I think so. I think this is an outstanding bourbon. Most right? definitely. So if if I was going to um, if we were going to give this one a mark, you know, I would I would on our scale. Yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking like maybe 85 to 87. Kind I, of thing. I was I was leaning very closely towards 87 at yeah. first. At first, I was saying sub 80, but now I'm thinking, no, 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 no. No. This is, no, 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 this is a hidden gem. Yeah. This is quite this lovely. Is. At the price point, I'd say it's very worth it. Yeah. I would not be in any way inhibited to, to share this with friends. Oh, absolutely not. No, uh, this, would, is, this is a nice whiskey. I would prominently display this in my cabinet, most definitely. In fact, do. Hmm. No, for sure. I think we have a winner there. Mm -hmm. That is a very pleasant uh, bourbon, and for anybody that likes the standard, sweet, regular, run-of-the-mill bourbon, wow. you really should step up and try this, because this is outstanding, I think. I right? agree. Yeah. This is going to be shocking. Like I said, at the first, at my first taste of this, I really, I was like, wow, this is... This is a little on the pricey side for the level of quality, but actually, now, I am thinking that this is out of the park. Yeah. No. I really do think this is very good. 
This is one of the nicest bourbons that I've ever tried. I do. And I think my next bourbon purchase is going to be gonna this be that. I don't have this on my bar. The the nicest one on my bar is Knob Knob Creek. Knob Creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It comes in in the low 50s. What, yeah. Yeah. 55% yeah. or something like that. But it's a very nice bourbon. It is sweeter than this for sure. It's most definitely. Right? Most definitely sweeter than this. But this one, yeah, is, is better than that. In my opinion. Do we want to add water to this and, and see I? what? I think not. No? You mm -hmm. think not? I think not. And, and the reason I say that is because a lot of people tend to drink bourbon on ice. Oh, right. And I think that sometimes bourbon on ice works. Yeah. This? I'm going to try a little bit in here just to see. One milliliter. You exactly. Are, you are adventurous. No, I no, we're am using, not going to We're using spoil a it. one milliliter pipette. So yeah. we're scientific here. Yeah. Alcohol abuse. Yeah. We should well, we tried it on the last one. Alcohol abuse. <laughs> hey, by the way, yeah, we're um, using the alcohol. I just want to. I, I haven't. We haven't mentioned this yet, but if you haven't subscribed to our channel mm. and you like watching two guys um, drink booze and get slightly in, inebriated while we're doing this, um, and give us your opinion. And give us your opinion. Yeah. If you've had an experience with any of the things that we've tried, yeah. Yeah. please let us know. Yeah. We'd like to know. We like. We always want to compare notes. No, exactly. Um, but but in the meantime, please subscribe, like hit our like channel, button. hit the like button, button, hit the yeah. subscribe button, yeah. and also please share with your friends. Yeah, absolutely. Our subscribership yeah. is growing. We are now at. Thirty-three or 33, something. Or, yeah, Thirty-three yeah, subscribers. Yes. Keep but, going, kids. We're yeah. gonna keep. We're gonna get this. We're gonna make this work. And every show will get better. You know what? Water in there didn't do a thing for it. No. No. I kind of it was just, afraid of that. Yeah, it didn't do anything. So. In this case, alcohol abuse. Yeah. So if you, yeah, yeah. don't don't put water in this. Don't in water this. it down. Yeah, yeah. Straight up is the way to drink it. So. You know, and that's funny because I tend to be an all or nothing kind of guy. If I can't have it all, I'll take nothing. Yeah, but here I have it all. But yeah, I mean, in scotches, there's a lot that I actually like. A few drops of water just breaks that surface tension. Completely you get more different aroma. Animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for this, that it didn't do it. It's best just straight out of the if bottle. If I was, if I was, if I was a, um, if 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 bourbon was my exclusive go-to, yeah. this is one that I would never put on ice. No, I don't think so. No, Never. no, 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 not a chance. Anyways, are we going to rate this? Oh, we did. Mm. 87. I think we said 87, 87. and I think, Perfect. I think that's definitely, I, and I don't I think even well think that's it. generous. I think yeah. that's well worth it. Yeah. Price point, quality, definitely the kick. Awesome flavor. Yeah. Incredibly good flavor. Yes. But this is, and I will say this, this is a traditional bourbon so if you're looking for something that's a little bit frilly a little bit more colorful no nah, it's not the right word a little sweeter if, if your palate tends to go to the sweet this probably isn't it no but if you're looking for a traditional bourbon something that will transcend or bring you back to a place certainly well before the the 20th century and and uh, i think that this will help you get there. Absolutely. It has complexity. Mm. It has that nuance of flavor and taste that that is why I drink scotch. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is yeah, again, this is the best uh, bourbon so far that I've so tasted. Far, so far on out of yeah. our short yeah. um, seven episode series, yeah. this is yeah. by far yeah. the crown. So it will be jewel. it will be interesting um, as time goes on when we get to episode 900. Will our opinion have changed on this? I or? wonder, because yeah. currently this is the bar. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. Well, thank you for tuning in today again. Yeah. And um, we will be back. Yeah. With and we're just remember to subscribe, episode. to hit the like button, and tell your friends about us. We'd actually like, uh, we'd like to hit that 100 subscriber mark, right? Before <laughs> Christmas. Certainly before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. So everybody and in Winnipeg, tell your buddies. <laughs> subscribe to us and if awesome. you happen to be in high river and you happen to want to attend one of our tapings you're more than welcome to join we have lots oh, of chairs sure. yep. we have lots of time 
and we would love to have you join us and experience what we experience. Exactly. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great, great evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.